I have a word from God for your life, a prayer for your life. Let's praise Psalm 91, which is the psalm of divine protection, and may God protect, guard, and deliver our lives. Follow this prayer until the end because God will bless you abundantly and powerfully, protecting, prospering, and blessing you in all areas of your life. Psalm 9-1 is one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible, and through this psalm, we can find God's answers for our lives, relief for our souls, deliverance for us and our families. Psalm 91 has 16 verses, and we will be reading and praying based on this psalm, and divine protection will come to your home. Please also share your prayer requests in the comments of this video. I will present your prayer requests to God. Comment below with your prayer request. It doesn't matter how simple or important your prayer request is. God answers everything, from the smallest to the impossible things. God has the power to do the supernatural. So make your prayer request. If you know a family member or friend who needs to hear this psalm, share it with them. Perhaps this psalm will enrich their soul and strengthen their spirit because blessings need to be shared among brothers and sisters. So let us pray. Psalm 91 Verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This first verse shows us a divine promise for you and me, a spiritual promise for our lives. The text is very clear in saying, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In this verse, we see some mysteries of God and important things for our lives and protection. Notice that the text says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Who is the Most High being referred to here? It is God Himself, the Almighty God. And who is this person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High? This person is me. And it's you, and it's you. This person who hides in the secret place is us. We are guarded in the secret place of the Most High. This means that our adversaries cannot see us, cannot perceive us, because we are hidden in God. We are protected in God. God is protecting your home, your family, your work, your business, your children. Everything is under divine protection. That's why the text also says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, I, you, we who are hidden in the secret place of the Most High, can rest in the shadow of the Almighty, and in that shadow, we find rest. The Bible says that the people of Israel walked through the desert, and the desert sun was scorching, extremely hot. So, to prevent the people from dying in the middle of the desert, God would send a shadow where the people of Israel could rest peacefully. This shadow represents the rest of God for our lives, for our souls. Therefore, rest in the Lord. Don't be anxious about anything in this life. Simply rest. Because God is watching over you. God is protecting you. You are in the safest place in the universe. You are in the secret place of the Most High. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, and my fortress, in Him I will trust. Look at this beautiful and impactful verse 2. It says, I will say of the Lord. You can say to God, you know what you can say to God. You can say that He is your God, that He is your refuge, that He is your fortress, and you will trust in Him. Notice that the psalmist says that God is a refuge and fortress. In other words, you can take refuge in Him. He is a fortress because He guards you. The prophet Isaiah asked, Can a mother forget her? Nursing child, those who are listening to me, whether you are a mother or a daughter, you know very well how a mother protects her child when someone wants to harm them. See, this mother guards, 
she protects. I am sure that as a mother, if someone tries to harm your child, you become fierce. You don't let anyone touch your children. It's the same with God. In the book of Isaiah, he says that even if a mother, even if a mother who has an almost divine love, even if this mother were to forget her child, the Lord your God will never forget you. And the text also says that we are in the palm of God's hand, and the walls surround us, and what are these walls? These walls are the fortress, the protection, the angels of the Lord guarding our lives. Hey, you are in the refuge. You are in the fortress, in the shadow of the Almighty. No harm, no plague, no curse can come against your life because you are secure. You are safe in the shadow of God's omnipotence. Verse 3 tells us, I am reading verse by verse and explaining each verse of Psalm 91. And verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Look, this verse is beautiful. God is assuring us that he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Have you ever hunted birds? It may sound ironic, but it's true. The text says, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Those who have hunted birds know very well how it works. To catch a bird, you need to set a snare, a trap. To capture that bird, to ensnare it. And the helpless bird usually falls into these traps, these snares. God is saying that we are like helpless birds. But when the enemy sets the traps, the snare of the fowler, who is the helpless bird? It is us. The enemy sets bird snares to catch us. That's why Peter says that Satan walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the enemy sets the snares of the fowler. But in verse 3 of Psalm 91, God makes us a promise, and the promise is that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Perilous pestilence refers to the forces of evil, the harmful plagues. God will deliver us from these harmful plagues and from the snare of the fowler. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that every snare of the fowler and every trap the enemy has set against your life at this moment is now broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God undoes every snare of the fowler. Against your home, your family, your spouse, your children, your relatives, brothers, and friends. Every snare of the fowler that brings sickness, every snare of the fowler that hinders your business, that hinders your financial life. Now, at this moment, we rebuke in the name of Jesus every snare and declare it broken against your life, your home, your family, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive God's deliverance in your life. You can say, Amen. Verse 4 of Psalm 91 says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. In this verse 4, God is assuring us that he will cover us with his feathers. How can that be, God? Does he have feathers? Because here in Psalm 91, God is representing himself as a mother. Eagle, and the mother eagle takes her eaglets and places them under her feathers. Are you an eaglet? God is the mother eagle who guards. The eaglets, and the mother eagle spreads her wings and places her eaglets beneath her wings. That's why verse 4 is saying that he, God, will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings, the wings of this eagle called God, you will be safe, and God's truth is your shield and buckler, your protection that blocks the attacks of the enemy. That's why Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God's truth is a shield for our lives. Verse 5 says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Notice that the text says we will not fear the terror by night. Generally, the forces of evil 
Entities Notice that in macabre rituals, the forces of evil usually ask for sacrifices to be made at night, at midnight. However, midnight is not the devil's hour. The devil doesn't have a specific hour, all hours belong to God. The day, the afternoon, the night belong to God. Satan simply likes to imitate the things of God. He likes to transgress the things of God. And notice that evil entities usually ask for offerings, sacrifices during the night, at midnight. But we can see in the Bible that many miracles happened at midnight. The Red Sea parted at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang at midnight, and there was an earthquake, and they were set free. The Bible says that at midnight the bridegroom called, and the virgins, the brides, responded to the bridegroom. In other words, several Bible verses talk about miracles happening at midnight. So, midnight is not the devil's hour. However, the enemy likes to imitate God. That's why he asks for wicked deeds to be done at midnight. But in verse 5, God is showing us the following, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. God is telling us here not to fear, not to be afraid of the works of evil. I often receive messages from people who are terrified of wicked deeds that have been done against them. And I always present this psalm because we don't need to fear the works of evil. Why? Because the one who is with us is greater than the army, greater than the navy, greater than the air force, greater than hell, greater than the angels, greater than the universe. The one who is with us is the Almighty, the one who dwells in the hiding place of the Most High, of the Omnipotent. You can rest assured. So, do not be afraid because you are protected by God. Take hold of this protection. Keep this word in your heart, you shall not fear, for I will not fear the terror by night. I will not fear the terror by night because I dwell in the hiding place of the Most High and in the shadow of the Omnipotent. I can rest. Because He is our fortress, and we have Him as our refuge. For this reason, we do not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by. Day because the enemy does not only work at night. Verse 5 clearly shows us that we will not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. What does it represent? What does the arrow that flies by day mean? The arrow that flies by day represents the wicked attacks. That happened during the day. However, we do not need to fear. Why? Because God is our refuge and fortress. When you experience fear, it means you are not trusting in divine protection. Because the text clearly shows us that He is our shield and stronghold, that He guards us under the shadow of His wings. So why fear? What is the purpose of fear? Do not be afraid. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. In other words, you have 24-7 protection. Jesus made us a promise, saying, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have divine protection in your life. Do not be afraid. Let's continue. Verse 6 Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Here, the psalmist is still talking about the works of evil, the forces of darkness. Verses 5 and 6 are closely related. You shall not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness. These are demons that roam in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. In other words, God is telling us not to fear the forces of evil. I don't understand how a Christian can fear the forces of evil. 
You cannot fear the forces of evil because greater is he who is with us than he who is in the world. Amen. Verse 7 is a well. Known verse and it says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Look. The psalmist is saying that even if a battalion, even if an army of demons, of evil forces, falls at your side, falls at your right hand. Nothing will happen to you. Why? Because you are protected. This is the protection of God, my sister, my brother. Verse 7. Let me read it again because this verse is so beautiful. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Did you understand? You are protected by God. Nothing can touch a single hair of yours if you believe with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength in God's promise recorded in this Psalm 91. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but you will not. You will not be affected because God is with you. Say Amen. Say, I claim this. Word for myself. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. In this text, God is telling us through. The psalmist that while we rest, while we receive God's protection and deliverance, we will witness the reward of the wicked, God's judgment. Upon the wicked. We will see with our own eyes God's justice being done. Verse 9. Psalm 91 says, Because you have made the Lord. Who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place? Look, the text reinforces what was said in verse 1 and verse 2, reminding us once again that God is our refuge, and in the Most High, we can dwell. Amen. Now, verse 10 says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Let me repeat because this verse is too beautiful. Glory. No evil shall befall you. What is God saying to you? Nothing will happen to you because I protect you, I guard you, I deliver you, I defend you. God is not saying that two or three or four or five evils will happen in your life. God is not saying that all the evils will happen in your life. No, no, no. God is saying that no, absolutely no evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall you. It means that nothing will happen to you because God protects you. But you need to believe with all your heart, trust in God with all your soul, knowing that He guards and defends you, that He is your help, your refuge, your fortress. No evil shall befall you, and no plague shall come near your dwelling. Hey, your dwelling is protected. The north of your dwelling is protected. There are angels of God spread around. The north of your dwelling, in the south of your dwelling, in the east, in the west, in the four corners around your dwelling, on the roof of your dwelling. God is sending mighty angels now to your dwelling. Mighty angels, guardian angels, angels of God, mighty in battle, are being sent at this very moment to protect, to guard, to deliver your dwelling because that's what angels are for. Angels are divine protectors, and they are surrounding your dwelling to protect your life right now. Feel peace in your soul. Feel peace in your heart. There are angels of God surrounding your dwelling, protecting your life in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come. Near your dwelling, your family, the lives of your children, the life of your husband, the life of your wife, your work, your friends, your colleagues, your classmates. No harm will come to you because God is protecting you. Amen. Say Amen. Comment below. Amen. Verse 11. Tells us why. 
because he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. This verse 11 is so beautiful. God is saying that the angels of the Lord will guard us in all our ways. Do you know what this means? When you go to the bakery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the bank, to the lottery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the mall, the angels are guarding you. When you go to church, the angels are guarding you. That's why the text says that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 11. So, all your ways are guarded by God. Rest, trust. Be at peace. Now, there is a caveat. Jesus said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Of course, if you see a deserted street, you're not going to test God and say, God is guarding me, so I'll pass through here recklessly, imprudently, and God will protect me. God guards us when we are in accordance with His will, right? Don't stray from the Lord's will, don't stray from the Father's will. Stand firm in the will of Jesus and be prudent. There are many people who may say, since God is guarding me, I'll accelerate the car to over 100 km per hour, and God will protect me, right? Negative. God will protect us, but we also have to be prudent. We have to be vigilant. God protects, but we have to do our part as well. When Satan told Jesus to jump from the pinnacle, Satan quoted this verse to Jesus, saying that the angels would protect and guard Jesus so that he would not strike his foot against a stone. But Jesus said to Satan, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In other words, we have divine protection. God guards us with his angels in all our ways, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be watchful, on the contrary, we must also be vigilant. The street is deserted. Avoid passing through the deserted street. Are you hearing news of crime in a particular area? Avoid going through there because God provides greater protection. We need to be prudent. That being said, let's move on to the next verse, verse 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 12 says, they will bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. God is saying here that the angels will provide protection for us in the smallest details. Yes, we have divine protection. When human resources run out, God's resources arrive. If there is no human alternative, then God's alternatives come into play. Understand this, if there are no other possibilities and you have to pass through that place, then God will guard you. But if there is a possibility for you to be vigilant and make a better choice, then we cannot test the Lord our God. However, God is giving us the assurance that He will guard us, even in the smallest details. When the text says that the angels will guard you, so that you do not strike your foot against a stone, it means that God will protect you in every aspect of life. Amen. Next verse, verse 13, says, You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. This text helps us understand what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 when he sent out the seventy disciples on a mission. The story is narrated in Luke chapter 10. Jesus gave them power and authority. He said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, Satan, the forces of evil. In verse 13 of Psalm 91, the lion and the venomous serpent are being described. And God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent, we will trample them underfoot. But the serpent will be under the feet of the son or the son of the lion. God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent. Why is the enemy depicted in the Bible as a lion? 
Even Peter says, Satan walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word Satan is a Greek word and means serpent. In the Garden of Eden, the enemy presented himself to Eve in the form of a serpent. So Satan is the false lion because the true lion is Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But God is saying that he will grant us spiritual authority to trample upon the works of evil. This means that God is saying, I am giving you authority to overcome the forces of evil. Treading upon the forces of evil represents that you will tread upon the lion, the serpent, you will put your feet upon the offspring of the lion, the serpent. Verse 13 is stating that God will give us spiritual authority to crush, tread upon, overthrow, and undo the forces of evil. Verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high because he has known my name. This verse is God speaking to us, saying what? Because he has set his love upon me, meaning because we have loved God, because we love the Lord. For this reason, because of this love we have for God, God is saying that because of this love, he will also deliver us, set us on high. Because we know his name. These are the privileges of loving God, of having a friendship relationship with the Creator. When we are friends with God, we have in him our refuge, our strength, our spiritual protection 24-7. Verse 15 says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him, and honor him. God is guaranteeing to us in verse 15 that when we call upon his name, he will answer us. He will be with us in times of trouble, he will deliver us, and he will honor us. God is giving us the assurance that in moments of anguish, we will not be alone. Even though moments of anguish may seem dark, even though they may seem lonely, devastating, God is there, guarding our lives. And what about that story we all know about the footprints in the sand? A man walking on the sand saw the scenes of his life in the sky. And as he walked on the sand, he saw two sets of footprints, his own and Jesus' footprints, depicting the most beautiful moments of his life. And suddenly, as the scenes changed and the saddest moments of his life began to appear, only two footprints were seen in the sand. Then the man said to God, In the moments when I needed you the most, Lord, you left me alone. Then God says, No, those footprints in the sand are not yours, they are mine. So he asks, And where are my footprints? Then God says, Those footprints are mine. Yours. Didn't appear because at that moment I was carrying you in my arms, meaning that in times of distress, God is carrying us in his arms. That's why Jesus said, Who needs a doctor, the saint or the sick? So Jesus came for the sick. If you are tired and burdened, God can relieve you, and receive relief for your distress, relief for your soul, and peace in your spirit in the name of Jesus at this moment. And verse 16 concludes Psalm 91, saying, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. When the text says, With long life will I satisfy him, God is giving us the promise that we will have a long life, that we will have an abundance of days. Long life to those who love the Lord. Long life to those who trust in God. Long life to those who have God as their refuge, to those who have God as their friend. Long life to those who seek the face of God. And God says more, I will give you long life, abundance of days. And I won't stop there. I will give even more. I will give my salvation to those who love me, says the Lord. These are the blessings. The blessings of Psalm 91 are 16 verses, and here we have read verse by verse, explaining each one. A blessing, isn't it? Comment down below.
in the comments what you thought of the explanation of each verse of Psalm 91. Share it with a friend. Some people read Psalm 91 and don't understand, but through this explanation, you were able to understand verse by verse. If you have any questions, comment below, and I will be reading. Amen. If possible, I will be reading. If there are many comments, it may take me a while to read, but I will make an effort to read the comments. So leave your prayer requests because we are going to pray now. Hold on, the video is not over yet. We are going to pray. Now I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 91 because the first step was for you to understand Psalm 91. Now that you understand the meaning of each word of Psalm 91, let us now, based on what we have read, what we have learned, pray, pray asking. God for the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Wherever you are, close your eyes. If you can, leave your prayer requests in the comments, and let us pray with faith because the prayer of faith will save the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the afflicted. The prayer of faith will open doors of employment. The prayer of faith will make supernatural. Miracles happen in our lives. Close your eyes with me and let us pray in this moment. Holy Spirit of Truth, Almighty God, Omniscient, Omnipresent, and Creator of Heaven and Earth. You are Lord in the heavens, you are Lord in the seas. You are the Lord of the stars. You are the Lord of the universe. We invoke your name, O Most High God. God who reveals himself in Psalm 91. You are the Most High, our Divine Protection. And we ask for your blessing, O Lord, in our lives. Your grace manifested, Holy Spirit of Truth. I present the life of this woman who listens to me. The life of this man who listens to me. God, through this prayer, come, Lord, pour out your power, your grace. Your anointing, your virtue, your strength. Come and grant spiritual strength to your people. Come and baptize with your spirit, renew. Spiritual forces, energies. God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, send your cloud, your protection, your glory, your power. Your love, O Almighty God. Forgive, O Lord, the sins of your people. Forgive all iniquity. Come, Lord, cleanse our soul, our spirit, forgiving. Our faults, our weaknesses committed through thoughts or feelings, actions, and gestures. Everything, Lord, that has been disapproved by you, everything, Lord, that has displeased and saddened your Holy Spirit, and that we have spoken, thought, or done. We ask for forgiveness at this hour. Forgive us with your precious blood, Lord, cleanse our altar, cleanse our garments, making them whiter than snow. God, in the name of Jesus, come, Lord, with your power, come and restore marriages, come and restore relationships, come and restore families. God, we ask you, Lord, for all the people who are homeless, for all the people who have lost their loved ones in tragedies. Come and guard, come and deliver, come and protect in the name of Jesus, sending your provision, sending your mercy. Give, Lord, deliverance to your people. God, we do not fully understand your will, but we do not surrender to your will, asking for your mercy, asking, O oh God, for your peace over Brazil, over the world. Come and rebuke wars, come and rebuke conflicts. Come and bring your peace, Lord, into families, come and restore, God, in the name of Jesus, the financial life of your people, bless them. Sentimental life of your church, bless in the life, Lord, of this woman who listens to me, who hears me. Come and restore the sentimental life, the financial life, the family life in all areas of her life, of his life. Come and bring health, come and bring peace. 
If there is any illness, place your hand on your illness. If there is someone who is sick in your family, place your hands on the illness in the name of Jesus. Pray these words with me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every illness, leave now, disappear now, vanish now in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, heal the illnesses. Now, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of Psalm 91. The Most High, our refuge, our stronghold, and we trust in you. Deliver us. From evil, deliver us from evil. O God, protect our house from the violent man, the bloodthirsty man, the corrupt man. God, deliver. Lord, the house of your servant, the house of your servant from all evil. In the name of Jesus, guard our lives under your mighty hand. Under your protection, under your blessing, Lord. Release upon us the blessings of Psalm 91, may each verse of Psalm 91 be fulfilled in our lives, guarding us, delivering us, protecting us, defending us, granting us, Lord, abundance of days, long life for our lives, long life with health, with prosperity in the name of Jesus. Receive now, you who are listening to me. You who are hearing me. Woman of God, man of God, who is listening to me at this moment. Receive health in your body, receive prosperity in your life, financial prosperity, emotional prosperity, family prosperity, prosperity in all areas of your life. Receive now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and thanks be to God, say yes with me. I take possession of my victory. Repeat once again, I take possession of my victory. I take possession of my blessing. I take possession of my blessing, my victory, my prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless your life. May God bless our lives, because if you are blessed, I am blessed too. When one wins, everyone wins because we are the family of Jesus. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be in your heart. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be in your home. Today we will be praying Psalm 1. I am absolutely certain that God will speak strongly to your heart through this prayer. Stay until the end because there is a response from God for your life in every area, finances, relationships, family, marriage, every aspect. God has a blessing to deliver to you. And Psalm 1 is a very powerful psalm. We will be reading it, praying it, and God will speak to you through my life. Before we begin, don't forget to leave your prayer request in the comments because I always read the comments and present each prayer request before God. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and activate notifications to receive new prayers consistently. Share this video with a friend, for it will certainly be a blessing in all our lives. Just see what God is revealing to us through this mighty psalm. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In this verse, we can find a hint, a victorious counsel for our lives. And what is this victorious counsel? The Word of God tells us that we are blessed when we do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Whether in our marriage, our work, or our lives. Never listen to the advice of people who are far from God, for their counsel can destroy your life. Instead, always listen to the advice of men and women of God, because through a word of faith, through guidance, you can receive great blessings. And verse 1 of Psalm 1 tells us that blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In other words, we cannot have friendships with people who bring us down. 
deceive us, mistreat us, or do not desire our success and growth. There are people listening to me now, and many blessings in there. Lives are being hindered because they associate and converse with negative people. When we surround ourselves with negativity, we end up receiving that negativity as well. Therefore, we need to surround ourselves with positive people, with people of God. There are blessings that are withheld because a person associates with bad influences. There is a saying that holds a great truth, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Walk with people of God, walk with women of God, with men of God. Do not have friendships that distance you from the Lord because that can be detrimental to your life. That's why Psalm 1 tells us, Blessed is the man. The man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. And in verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. This person is one who meditates on the word of the Lord day and night. You know what happens to this person. Verse 3 shows us, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. In other words, when we please God, when we stand firm in His presence, everything we do prospers. My sister, my brother, there are things that often don't prosper because we are not standing firm on the Word. But when you are firm in the Word, everything will prosper. Sometimes, there may be situations that seem not to be prospering, but in reality, they are prospering. And I want to tell you that God has prosperity for your life, prosperity in all areas, financial prosperity, spiritual prosperity, and family. Prosperity. But we must obey the presence of the Lord. We must be obedient to God. Our obedience to the Father is very important. It is crucial that we walk with people who draw us closer to God, people who lead us to victory, and people who help us grow. If you have been walking with someone who brings you down, drains your energy, distance yourself from these negative people because they are obstacles in your life. That is why it is vital for us to walk in the Word of God and walk with people of God. The Word says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. This is the blessing of Psalm 1. What is the blessing of Psalm 1? The blessing of Psalm 1 is that if we stand firm in the presence of the Lord, we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bears fruit in its season, and its leaves do not wither. In other words, you will be a prosperous person, and I want to prophesy in your life that you will be. You are a fruitful tree, and you will bear fruit. And if you are producing fruit, you will produce even more fruit because God has prosperity for you. God has blessings for you. See. God loves you so much, God loves you so much. The Bible says that He is jealous for us. God does not want to lose our lives to the enemy. God loves us deeply. That's why God asks us to be obedient to His Word, obedient to His commands. And the Word of God tells us even. More, the wicked are not so, Psalm 1. But they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Why? Verse 6. Because the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. In other words, living far from God is a great danger. We need to be close to the Lord. If you are going, through a difficult time, do not doubt God. He will surprise you and grant victory in your life. You know why? Because you are a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. You are God's eagle, 
and eagles are meant to soar in high places. Eagles were not made to fly with sparrows. Eagles were made to fly with eagles. You are a lion. You are a lioness. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you are a child of God. You are a daughter of the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are a son of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So, let me ask you, what is a child of a lion? A child of a lion is a lioness, a child of a lion is a lion. Therefore, if Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and we are his children, then we are lions and lionesses. Lions do not walk with wolves, lions walk with lions and lionesses. We cannot mix with negative people, gossipers, envious individuals, or those who constantly lie. Because when you associate with these kinds of people, little by little, you also start committing the same sins. If you stop and have a conversation for a minute with a gossiper, before you know it, you get involved in gossip too. It's very difficult for you to sit with a gossiper and start gossiping and not fall into that sin. That's why we need to be watchful. Watchful of who we converse with. Watchful of whom you share your secrets with. There are people who approach you wanting you to confide in them, but in reality, that person is only near you to witness your downfall. There are people who come close to you, not to help you, but to bring you down. But the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to deliver us and keep away all these evil people from our lives. It is clear and evident that there will always be evil people trying to enter our lives, but we have to flee from the appearance of evil. You are chosen by God, and that is why God is using me to bring this word to you. Do you know who our worst enemy is? Our worst enemy is not the one who openly declares themselves as your enemy. Our worst enemy is the one who claims to be our friend, but in reality, they are a false friend. They say they are your friend, but deep down, they want to witness your downfall. They say they love you. They say they care about you and even celebrate your success, but in truth, they want to see you fail. Therefore, we must be very cautious. Of course, true friends do exist. Of course, there are people who genuinely want to see our success, growth, and happiness. Unfortunately, there are also people who don't want to see us happy, who don't want to see us thrive or progress in life. But I have news for you, even if everyone else doesn't want to see you succeed, even if there's a group of people out there hoping for your downfall, they will be ashamed and confused. Why? Because you will not fall. You will remain standing. You will not lose, you will conquer. And all those who want to witness your defeat will have to witness the victory of God in your life, in the name of Jesus. Hey, a time of victory is approaching for you. A time to smile is coming. The time of suffering is about to end. The time to sing has arrived. But be watchful. Now, stand firm in the presence of the Lord because God will honor your faith. God will honor your hope, so simply rest your soul and distance yourself from all negative people, from those who have no commitment to God and want to drag you into the world. You might say to me, but can't I talk to a non-believer? Of course you can, but we need to understand that we are here on this earth to influence and win people over to Jesus. We cannot sit in the company of mockers. In other words, we should not join a group of people who speak ill of the gospel, who criticize A and B, who speak poorly of C and everyone else. Sister, brother, you cannot be part of that circle. Let's be vigilant. Let's pray. Let's be cautious about the people we engage with, the conversations we have. 
Let's be attentive because Psalm 1 reveals this to us. Psalm 1 reveals that we need to seek the presence of God and avoid sitting among mockers. If we act and live accordingly, we will be like a tree planted by streams of water. Our leaves will not wither, and everything we do will prosper. Amen. I want to offer a special prayer for your life. I want to pray for you so that the blessings of Psalm 1 may descend upon your life and that you may be like a tree planted by streams of water. May everything you do prosper greatly for the glory of God. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of Truth, we stand in your presence. I want to lift up the life of your servant, the life of your child who is listening to me at this moment. God, intervene with your providence and grant great victories in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open doors and bestow your blessings upon us. God, pour out upon us the blessings of Psalm 1. May we be trees of righteousness and may we bear fruits, fruits of blessings, victories, and achievements. Lord, bless our lives. Lord, open the doors and floodgates of heaven. Pour out blessings and showers of blessings upon the lives of your people. We ask this in the name of Jesus, and we thank you in advance because you are faithful, you are awe-inspiring, Lord. May the blessings of Psalm 1 be upon the life of your daughter, upon the life of your son. God, grant strength, grace, and encouragement. God, keep away from us. All negative friendships, all friendships that wish to see our downfall, all false friendships that desire our ruin. Lord, keep away from us the wicked man. You guard us under your blood, and may you bless our lives. In the name of Jesus, we ask, and in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Thank God and take possession of your victory. Take possession of your blessing. You are a tree of righteousness. You are a tree that bears fruit in the presence of God. Remain steadfast in the presence of the Lord, for great is the reward that comes from above, from God. Thanks to God, He grants us victory through the power of God. I greet all my brothers and sisters with a holy and powerful peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Today, we will pray Psalm 90. We will be reading Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we will pray based on this. Psalm. I want this prayer to be a blessing in your life and in the life of another person. For this reason, please share this video with a friend, a family member, so they can also receive this prayer. Amen. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I also want to send my greetings to all the subscribers of the channel and to all those who have activated the notifications. Thank you very much for being part of this prayer family. All the subscribers of the channel are already part of my prayer family, and I include all of you in my prayers. If you wish, feel free to comment below to make your prayer request. I always read the comments and present them in prayer. Before God Psalm 90 is a psalm written by Moses, a beautiful psalm that brings us a reflection and a very important life lesson. It is Psalm 90, in verse 1, it says, Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. Here, the prophet Moses writes this psalm. And in verse 1, he makes an important declaration, saying that God had been and continues to be his refuge from generation to generation, the refuge for the people of Israel. The faithfulness of our God is astounding. He is our refuge, the one who guards, delivers, and protects us. And in verse 2, Moses further says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In this second verse, Moses, the psalmist, the prophet, speaks about the greatness of our God, 
that before all things were formed in the universe, God was God and is God from eternity to eternity. The prophet Isaiah says that the Lord is the Prince of Peace. He is the Father of Eternity, the Mighty and Powerful God. And in verse 3, Moses continues to write, saying, You turn people back to dust. Saying, Return to dust, you mortals. Because in verse 4, it says, A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Here, in verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 90, the psalmist Moses, a prophet of the Lord, shows how fleeting human life is and how quickly it passes. However, God, with his omniscience, his power, his exalted power, in verse 4, Moses brings a profound revelation about God. He says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. This shows us that God's time is different from our time. A thousand years may seem like a long time for us, but for God, a thousand years is like a day. This signifies how great, how powerful, how majestic our God is. The God we serve is a powerful, great, and exalted God, so much so that a thousand years for our God is like just one day. And in verse 5, he says even more, you sweep them away like a flood, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. Here, in verses 5 and 6, Moses is referring to the fragility of humanity, how fragile human beings are. Men and women are like plants that grow, wither, and die. And how transient we are in the face of the greatness of our God. And in verse 7, he says, For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath, we are dismayed. In verse 8, You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Verse 9, All our days pass away under your wrath, we finish our years with a moan. Here, Moses is emphasizing once again how fragile human life is and how much we need God. We need God to breathe, to live, to be happy. We need God for everything in this life. God is the refuge for the weary soul. God is the compass that guides the lost. God is the rock that remains steadfast and keeps our lives firm in His presence. Because of our Fragility, we need to stand firm in the Lord so that we do not fall. And this Psalm 90 illustrates how fragile human life is. And in verse 10, it says, The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty, yet their span is but toil and trouble, they are soon gone, and we fly away. Here, in this tenth verse, Moses is saying that human beings reach seventy or eighty years with much weariness, and we can see how fleeting this life is. Do you remember that some time ago you were fifteen years old? There was a time when you were ten years old. And notice how quickly time has passed. Notice how swiftly time has flown by, and you didn't realize it passing. And that's what Psalm 90 wants to remind us of, how transient life is. We need to make the most of this. Life in the presence of God, in the presence of the people we love. And in verse 11, it says even more, who considers the power of your anger, and your wrath according to the fear of you. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Here, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to teach him to number his days. What does that mean? To number our days? Notice that the wisest people, those who possess wisdom, are able to understand the dilemmas, the problems of life. Notice that fools, those who are not wise, cannot perceive life. They live as if they never truly lived. They live as fools. They live without comprehending the human existence. But those who fear God, those who seek God, 
can receive from God the wisdom to live. And that's why in this Psalm 90, Moses says, Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. And in verse 13, Moses says, Return, O Lord. How long? Have pity. On your servants. In verse 14, Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Verse 15, Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Here, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is referring to the period of struggle and trial that the people of Israel and Moses himself went through. Without a doubt, Moses wrote this psalm in light of all the anguish, battles, and evil he had experienced in his life. However, in Psalm 90, Moses is praying to God, asking for mercy, seeking God's help, and asking the Lord to look upon him. He acknowledges his insignificance, his humanity, and recognizes how great and majestic the Lord is. And in verse 16, Moses says, Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Verse 17, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us, yes. Establish the work of our hands. Here, in verse 17, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to confirm the work of their hands. This means that often people do not recognize the work of our hands. But Moses is asking God to acknowledge the work of his hands. In other words, Moses is saying, God, see how much I have done for you. When we talk about hands, the prophet Moses represents it well. Because the Bible says that when Moses, the same one who wrote Psalm 90, was in battle, Joshua and Hur were there supporting him. And the Bible says that Moses' hands grew weary. As long as Moses held up his hands, the people of Israel were winning the war. But when Moses lowered his hands, the people of Israel would lose the battle. Aaron and Hur held up Moses' weary hands and extended them. And Moses prayed for the people, and they won the fight. In writing this Psalm 90, Moses is expressing a kind of spiritual weariness. He is presenting before God how small he is and how great God is in his life. That's why in Psalm 90, Moses says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. It's as if Moses wants to say, God, you are too powerful, and I am merely a speck before you. You are too majestic, and I am a grain of sand before you. I am transient in this life, but you, O oh God, are mighty. God delights in this. When we acknowledge how small we are, when we recognize our fragility before God, before the one who lives and reigns forever, that's when God manifests his power, his love, and his glory. God doesn't need the strong because he is already strong. God doesn't need the great because he is already great. God needs the weak to show those who think they are strong that he is a powerful God. That's why God used David. In human terms, David was the smallest, the weakest. Goliath, the giant in human terms, was the strongest, the most powerful. But God uses the weak to overcome the strong. God uses the small to defeat the great. God uses those who are not to confound those who think they are something. So, my friend, who is listening to me at this moment, this is the blessing of Psalm 90. God is affirming to our lives, I will confirm the work of your hands. I am your refuge. I am the one who guards you, says the Lord. For this reason, be encouraged, rejoice, and rest because God is the one who sustains you. God is the one who protects you. God is the one who delivers you. And the blessings of Psalm 90 are upon your life. There will be a reign of victory, 
a reign of grace, a reign of power, a reign of blessings in your life, in your family, in your home, and wherever you lay your hands. The Lord will confirm it as a blessing, as prosperity. Wherever your hands touch, the Lord will prosper. The Lord will bless. That's why in the last verse of Psalm 90, verse 17, Moses says, Confirm the work of our hands. Today, God is confirming the works of your hands, meaning God is confirming your blessing, your victory. God is confirming the open door in your life. God is confirming the honor of God in your story. Claim this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 90 in your life. Amen. At this moment, I want to offer a prayer based on Psalm 90. I want to pray for you, for your family, for your home, for your work, for your business. Please type your name below in the comments. I want to offer this special prayer for your life. If you can, close your eyes at this moment. Focus on God, and let us pray. Sovereign God and Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the ends of the earth, in this moment of prayer, we come before you and ask for your blessing and provision. God, we have just read Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we want to claim all the blessings that are found in Psalm 90. Lord, we ask you to confirm the work of our hands. Confirm, O God, the blessings that we need to receive from your hand. Remove from our path anything that blocks, anything that hinders our victory. Grant us, Lord, your salvation, your deliverance, and the rewards that come from your throne, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. In this moment of prayer, I pray for your servant who is listening to me now, for your servant who is hearing me at this hour, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open every closed door and grant victory to your people. We ask you, Lord, for your deliverance. Comfort the hearts. Refresh the souls, O God, in the name of Jesus. For all those who are suffering for any reason, for all those who have lost, for all those who have failed, God, in the name of Jesus, console, comfort, and lift them up in the power of your might, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Visit the families, visit the homes with your peace, with your love. I pray to you, Lord, come and bring your provision, your answer, your love, your victory for the glory of your name, we ask you in prayer. Pour out your love upon us. Lord, pour out your infinite mercies, your infinite graces upon us. Pour them upon our lives, upon our family members, upon our homes, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask and desire this. We thank you, we thank you for deliverance, we thank you for healing, we thank you for open doors. We thank you for everything you are doing and everything you will do in our lives. Release upon us, Lord, an abundance of days. Release upon us health and prosperity, and the blessings of the Psalms in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask and thank you in advance. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thank God, and may God bless your life. May God bless your family and bless your home. Share this prayer with someone you love, with someone you care about. It is always good to share the good things in life, and prayer is something good for our soul, for our spirit. I will conclude here. Today we will be reciting a powerful prayer from Psalm 70. I am certain that this prayer will strengthen your faith, fortify your hope. And you will be strengthened in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Share this prayer with your friends and family. It will undoubtedly bless other lives. Feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments. 
I am always reading and presenting all prayer requests before God. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to become part of this wonderful prayer family. We are here every day, praying and seeking the face of God. We will now read Psalm 70 and then pray to the Lord, calling upon the Almighty God. Psalm 70, written by David, says the following in verse 1, Make haste, O God, to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion, let them turn back and be disgraced, those who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame. Who say, Aha, Aha. May all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. However, I am afflicted and in need. Hurry for me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. This Psalm 70 shows us. The distressed psalmist, David. He was probably going through a very, very difficult moment in his life. And who has never experienced such? A moment? A moment of anguish, sadness, affliction, to the point where you cry out, saying, God, hurry to deliver me. In verse 5. The psalmist is saying, however, I am afflicted and in need. Have you ever experienced such a moment, a moment of affliction where you feel helpless, alone? But I want you to know that the God who answered David's prayer is the same God we serve. And if your soul is like Psalm 70, anguished, sad, crying out, saying, God, hurry to help me, I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you that God will hurry to help you. God will hurry to grant you victory. God will hurry to place in your hands what you have been praying to Him for. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that even in this year, you will experience the best of God on earth. You will conquer everything you have asked for and dreamed of. Just persevere, insist, persist. Stay strong in your purpose because God is faithful to fulfill the promise. And in Psalm 70, the psalmist is saying, I am distressed. Hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word and telling you, hold on a little longer wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus. The blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes, hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. 
And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it. Any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word, and telling you, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes. Satan cannot prevail. Wherever God places his hand, the enemy cannot prevail, and God is placing his hand upon your situation, upon what you have been praying for. Victory is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Hold on to your victory, hold on to your blessing. Do not give up, insist, persist. Stand firm in faith and prayer because God will grant you the blessing, will grant you the victory, and you will come back to this channel to share your testimony. Make this vow with God. Lord, if you deliver what I am asking for, I will return to Bruno Souza's channel and share my testimony of that word from Psalm 70, Hurry, God, and I will say, God hurried to hear my prayer, answered my plea, and granted me victory for the glory and praise of your holy name. The only thing we need to understand is that every victory is for the glorification of God's name. We have nothing for ourselves, everything is for God. Everything belongs to God, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. When God grants you the house you have been asking for, say, glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the car you have been asking for, say, glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the marriage you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. Of course, we do our part. Of course, we make efforts to conquer, but everything comes from God. It is God who exalts, God who humbles. It is God who impoverishes and God who enriches. It is God who kills and God who makes alive. Everything is under His command, everything belongs to Him. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For from Him, and through Him are all things. Everything is in the domain of Jehovah, and we serve this God. So take hold of this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life and believe with all your heart, O God who hurries to grant victory. And the God of Jacob? He is not just the God of the past. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God of Jacob, and He has taken charge of your life. And victory is yours. 
What has God signed in your life? What has God signed for your life? No eraser from hell can erase what God has written for you. Take hold of your blessing. Lift up your head, turn things around because you were born to conquer, and nothing end. No one can take away the presence of God in your life, within your heart. And at this moment, I want to unite my faith with your faith. I want to unite my hope with your hope. I want to unite my certainty, my conviction with your conviction and certainty. I want to unite my prayer with your prayer, and together, in one unified cry, let us pray the prayer of Psalm 70. Amen. Let us pray, Sovereign God, Eternal Father, Creator of heaven and earth, in your holy and powerful, invincible and infallible presence, we stand. We are here to ask of you, we are here to thank you. We are here to pray, to seek your face. You are the one who lives and reigns forever. The psalmist was in a moment of anguish and sadness when he said to you, Hurry, O God, to deliver me. And we want to make the psalmist's words our own. Hurry, O God, to help us. Look upon the tears of your daughter, look upon the tears of your servant who is listening to this prayer, and perhaps is crying and asking you for an answer, a provision that only you can give. Lord, you are the specialist in the impossible. Nothing in heaven, on earth, in the stars, or in the seas is impossible for you. You can do all things. You are the one who walked on water. You are the one who multiplied bread and fish. You are the Lord who healed the paralytic and made him walk again. You are the one who made the blind see. You are the one who raised the dead. You are the one who died and rose again on the third day. You are powerful. You are magnificent. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the Lamb of God, the Bright Morning Star. Lord, You are the Alpha and the Omega, the Beginning and the End. You are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You are present in all places, and nothing is hidden from You. You know and You search all things. You know the heart of Your servant, the heart of Your handmaid. You know our hearts. God, you. Interpret the tears of the faithful believer. And in this moment of prayer, we want to present ourselves before you. Just as the psalmist. David presented himself in Psalm 70. And he said, But I am poor and needy. Look, O God, upon the affliction, the need of your people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask of you, we implore before you, we prostrate ourselves at your feet, recognizing your greatness. Recognizing that only you are faithful to fulfill, to accomplish the promises. You are not a man that you should lie, nor a son of man. That you should repent. Your word says that if your people, who are called by your name, will humble themselves, pray, seek your face, and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And here we are, humbling ourselves, seeking, praying, repenting for all the mistakes we have made, and we ask you, O God, to do the impossible and the supernatural, to do what the doctors could not do. Do what the lawyers, judges, and prosecutors could not do. Open the way for every cause in the justice system, Remove the obstacles, and grant victory to your servant. And to this afflicted mother who has been praying for her child's deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and addiction, set free, Lord, this woman's child and grant victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, to this afflicted and needy mother who prays for her children, who prays without God for her children, grant this gift, this blessing to your servant in the name of Jesus. Rescue, O oh God, this young woman, this young man from the addiction of alcohol and drugs, and make her a missionary in your 
presence, make him a preacher of the gospel. God, in the name of Jesus, I present this couple who are in crisis, this couple who is on the verge of divorce. God, in the name of Jesus, reach out with your outstretched hand, enter with your power and restore this marriage. Restore this family that is in crisis and grant victory to God for the glory and praise of your name. We cry out to a God who is faithful, who is mighty, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in the universe. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to perform the miracle, Lord, for this woman and this man who are seeking a job opportunity. Open the door of employment. Lord, bless the financial life of your daughter and son so that they can come back here in prayer and share the testimony that the door of employment has been opened for the glory of God. Open the door of employment in the lives of your daughter and son. Bless the material aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus, especially. Bless our spiritual lives, make us more intimate with you, make us Lord, more and more of your friends. Each day, make us more and more excellent worshippers. God, may we seek your face every day not out of pain, but out of love. It is love that we want to seek your presence. God, we trust in your power and we place you above all else, above everyone. You are in first place in our hearts. God, in the name of Jesus. We don't want to serve you just for what you can give us, but we want to serve you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. God, in the name of Jesus, bring your peace, bring your blessing, your love, your favor. May the blessings of Psalm 70 manifest in the lives of this woman and this man who is listening to me. I present before you, O oh God, all the prayer requests that have been placed in the comments of this video. Enter with your blessing, enter with your provision, enter with your answer, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask. You, in the name of Jesus. We cry out to you in the name of Jesus, we implore you before you, Lord, exalt the humble, bring down the one who exalts himself, grant victory to your people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask you in the name of Jesus. Come and heal the illnesses, whatever type of illness is in the bodies of your sons and daughters, let every illness disappear now in the name of Jesus. Disappear. For the word of God tells us in Isaiah 53 that the Lord has borne our sicknesses. The punishment that brought us peace was upon you, and by your wounds, we are healed, restored, transformed. So send your healing, send your favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hurry, O God, we are asking you as servants. We are imploring you as humble servants in your presence. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing, without you, we will achieve nothing. But with you, Lord, we can do all things, with you, O God, we can overcome the challenges of life. We acknowledge that, without you, we are powerless, for you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Therefore, O God, I present the requests of your sons and daughters and grant a special victory, an exclusive blessing, a blessing. From your throne in the lives of each brother, each sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of Psalm 70 be upon our lives, and may you, Lord, hasten by your mercy to grant us victory in every area of our lives, so that our testimony may be told and your name glorified in our testimony of victory and blessing. In the name of Jesus, we ask and thank you in advance for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen and thanks be to God, and may God bless your life. Take hold of this word, take hold of this prayer. Believe that the God of David, the God who hastens to help us, is with you, and with God, we are the majority, with God, 
we will break down walls, and with God, we will overcome giants. With God in our lives, we will overcome the storms. With God, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God of love and mercy. May God bless you greatly, you and your entire family. A big hug, and may the peace of the Lord Jesus be in your heart. And remember, you were born to conquer and experience all the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life. The peace of the Lord Jesus, and may God bless us more and more.